Hi everyone, I'm Andy Weibel and welcome to Timely Topics. We've been away for two years due to COVID and it's good to have you back. I'm happy to be back. And we've got a great guest today. Uh, we've got Dr. Dale Nesbury. Welcome to the show, Dr. Nesbury. Thank you, Dr. Weibel. It's a pleasure to be here after, what, two and a half years or so, huh? Yes, yes. What a break. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. Uh, so um, when people watch this, you'll probably no longer be president of Muskegon Community College. Um, you're retiring. Um, thanks for a good 13 years. But so, uh, so first off, why did you decide to retire? Why now? Well, uh, we were discussing earlier. Uh, so since 1986, I have been responsible uh, for leading, uh, governing, managing organizations and people. Um, this is year number 37 straight. And I feel like I could do more in that regard, but um, at this point in time, I'd like to spend some time with my wife, uh, <laughs> the kids, and-, and Did she mention that? I did, you know, she, might, you know, she retired 13 years ago, so she's, she's pretty much ready for me to walk out the door. So, okay. so this, all of those things and more caused me to make this decision. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. I, I assume the last two years have been different or tougher with uh, COVID and everything that's changed in higher ed? You know, they, they have, and, and as difficult as, as one might imagine that they would be for me, there are so many people, not just here at the college, but people uh, in the community or around the world who we've never faced this before, even mm -hmm. going back to the pandemic, um, Spanish flu, 1918. Uh, you weren't here for that. I was not here. My dad was here though. My oh. dad was born in 19 and 19, I believe. So he, uh, he, he found the end of it as, as, a, as a baby, but you never thought um, that mm. you'd face something like that. Yeah, so here, right. we're all facing that. So, so this, is, this has been quite the challenge for all of us. Yeah, it has, it has. I wanna go back a little bit about why you decided to come to Muskegon Community College, come to the Muskegon area. Sure. I know you were, you're from Twin Lake. I am from Twin so Lake. So you are from the area, but uh, what, what drew you to wanting to be president of MCC, and is it what you found, it, I mean, what you thought it would be? <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll, I'll start with what drew me here. I mean, clearly being from the area, and I always like to say that I'm from Twin Lake, or people, they'll look at me and they'll say, you're from Lakewood. No, I'm from Twin Lake. I grew up <laughs> in the town of Twin Lake, uh, contrary to what uh, many might want to believe because of the way I appear. Um, but I um, grew, grew up in Twin Lake, uh, attended Reese Puffer High School, so from the area my wife attended Fremont. So we, we, we had connections to this area. We were musicians. Uh, this is a, a strong area in terms of the arts. It's, it's beautiful. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons why people would want to live here, but I never imagined that I would come back to Muskegon because we went to East Lansing, Michigan for college and then traveled around the country for, for decades. Um, but I, because I was in administration and leadership and municipal government, and then as a mainline faculty member for years and years and years, not in this area, you know, that would never be something that I would believe would, would be a possibility. But uh, there are a few folks who asked me to apply for this position, and uh, I did. I was a university professor before this, academic vice president at a liberal arts college, so I didn't know whether I was the right fit for the institution. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so as it turns out, um, uh, the board and, and members of the search committee and, and the community thought I was. And so, so I, I ended up coming back to the area and we've had a, I think we've had a very nice time, nice run since we've been back. So what it was about a community college? I mean, uh, and, and I, I don't think you had worked so much for a community college oh. prior. And so did, did anything about working for a community college in particular seem attractive or, or did it grow on you as you were here? Well, it, it never occurred to me to work for a community college until um, 19, 19, 2003, I was on a fellowship and I, part of the fellowship was um, serving at a community college, the community college district of San Diego. So I hadn't, other than playing in the jazz ensemble and the uh, West Michigan Youth Symphony, I well, sure you something at the time here at MCC. I had no experience with community colleges other than transfer relationships with um, uh, local community colleges in the metro Detroit area. And uh, when I was in Boston, we used community college students as interns, but never had any experience. But working at uh, the community college district as a fellow, I understood the, 
the difference between a university and a community college. And we like, at universities, we like to think that we have a strong connection to our communities. But, we, you know, we, we really didn't. And community colleges, they, if they're doing the work they should do, they're doing that work in the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're more extensive in our outreach, I think, than we like to think. Uh, but we are primarily focused on Muskegon and the sort of, sort of the tri-county area. And, and that, that was, that, I'd say that part grew on me because I knew what community colleges did, but I wasn't so clear on the concept in terms of the deep connections that the community college has. And so I, I learned, um, learned a lot in my first few years here because of that. So yeah, it made sure. a difference. Yeah, I, I, I grew up uh, in North Manchester, Indiana, next to Manchester College, sure. now a university, but it's, it's a small liberal arts school. And... Um, there was not a very good connection between the town and the college. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. it was two separate towns, basically, yeah. uh, which is not the case with most community colleges. So. Yeah, that's so true. That is so true. And MCC is, is one of those institutions that it, it, it's always prided itself on community connections. And that's one, something that I wanted to work on and work with during my time here to enhance those if possible. So. Yeah, well, good, good. I'm, I'm glad the tradition has continued yes, during sir. your time. Um, you, you were the first African-American president of MCC uh, with Dr. Selman coming on. We have our second. Yes, indeed. Um, so that's our great. Ohio State Buckeye friend, Dr. <laughs> yes, Selman. right. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I assume that, that uh, created some opportunities for yourself um, as well as some challenges. Do you want to... Did, was that a factor throughout your time here? It, it was a factor, and it's, it's something that I would have hoped would have not have been the case that in 2009 that I would be the first African-American sure. president of this college. But I was, and I had a number of, um, uh, of folks who um, either took me under their wing, knew my family as, as I grew up and as they had relationships, uh, in terms of uh, how to navigate the community. So, so they, they knew that I had some sense of that and I'd done that kind of work, but, but coming to this, uh, this area, uh, being, being an African American, that's something that we hadn't had happen. So my approach was, if I can uh, make the case that I am fully capable of doing, uh, doing the work that needs to be done here, uh, and put another way, there, often one will be asked to show gratitude for the opportunity. And I, I'm always grateful for the work, um, the opportunity to do work. But the other piece as an African American, we're, all, we're often asked to be grateful for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you know, not to be uh, overly uh, uh, you know, prideful of my background. But um, I came with a skill set that um, I thought matched what we needed here. And, and to be told that I needed to be uh, grateful uh, was that's something that, that concerned me. Sure. I, yeah. was, I, was, I felt that I was, and the board felt, and the, and the community felt that I was well prepared for this position. And, and as an African American, we, we often have people um, approach us that way. Uh, my, my basic response was, well, um, how many of your presidents came with, in with having managed a $400 million budget uh, 20 years before they became president of this college, mm -hmm. which is 10 times of the size of our budget? Um, you know, so just as an example, so I, I earned the right to be here. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, no one um, gave me anything, and that, that's sure. something that I, you know, didn't uh, think that needed to uh, stand. So I wanted to respond in, in a manner that some might think is forceful or uh, overly assertive, but if someone walks into my office and asks where the president is, mm -hmm. that's the kind of response they're going to get. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And have you have you seen the college uh, change in in terms of say DEI work and other things? Um, do, you, the, do you do you see that as something that you're proud of or that you, you pushed forward during your time here to increase diversity, equity, inclusion? Sure, I, I'm, I am proud of the work that, that the college has done. I've, I've, that's been a priority of mine. But um, 
I think the college over time has made progress. And there was progress that was made not just in the college, but in the community as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I faced issues that, uh, because of who I am, um, others may not have had to face. But uh, compared to 1973, when, when I left um, to go to East Lansing, Michigan, <laughs> yes, sir, um, and, and returned um, in 2009, it was a, it was a different community. Mm -hmm. So there, there was a lot of work to be done, but uh, there was um, progress that al had already been made, regardless of the fact that we hadn't had an African-American president before that. The, uh, I'd say the, um, the inclusion portion of diversity, equity, inclusion, that was well underway, needing some additional support, but there was work that was done before I came on board that helped out quite a bit. So you've expanded and, and progressed on that, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Um, you've, as, as president, you've really been uh, prominent in the community. Um, in many ways, I think the president is the face of the organization. Sure. And uh, I think you've taken that on with uh, great gusto. And no, I'll uh, try to some. Um, I mean, what, what are some of the community work and organizations you've served uh, that you would be most proud of uh, during your 13 years here and uh, maybe some connections you hope to keep? Sure. And what, what I say uh, is that any, any organization that I've served with or supported, I've done that so that students like me would feel as though they belonged here. Mm -hmm. And so that's not just for students of color. I mean, I grew up in, in Twin Lake in a town that was basically 95% um, white. You know, there, were, there must have been maybe three or four black families in, in Twin Lake itself. So most of my friends I, I describe it this way. We grew up wanting to work on cars and, you know, mm -hmm. work, work, work in the shop, do that kind of work. And those kind of, kinds of uh, kids didn't believe they could grow up going to college. That was not something that was one of their goals. So, so that was something I wanted to go to uh, locations like Twin Lake, or it could be Holton, which was not too far away from where I grew up, and, and share with, with those kids not, not necessarily the parents, but the kids. Kids need to hear this, that they are capable of doing that work. And then um, in, in terms of um, Muskegon proper, Muskegon Heights, some of the core communities, uh, they never had a president who looked anything like me before here. Mm -hmm. And you know, they needed to see that, uh, that there were folks who looked like them, or in the case of Twin Lake, um, a person who was raised in a similar manner that they were, who could grow up to be the, the, the president of Newton CC or grow up to be the uh, research director of the Boston Police Department, which is one of my past uh, gigs, right. as we call them, or anything of that nature. They needed to see that they could do that. They were very, every bit as good, someone growing up in, like say, Twin Lake, Holton, Muskegon, Muskegon Heights, uh, any community in this area, they could do what someone growing up in Brookline, Massachusetts could do, which is when we lived there for Brookline and Boston for eight years. Mm -hmm. Everyone believes they can do that work in those areas. And almost no one believes they can do that work here no matter how much they're told. So that part of my job was to explain to those kids. And again, not their parents, the kids need to hear it. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, also though, I, I'm, I mean, I, I know you're on the, the hospital board and uh, other uh, boards throughout sure. town. Um, do you think that's important for the president to do and, and did you enjoy that work? It's important for the president to do, it's important for not just the president of MCC, Muskegon Community College, but it's important for, for members of the Muskegon community to be, have a presence on those kinds of boards. Say the Trinity uh, State Board, that's a board which uh, uh, governs uh, basically a $6 billion, 25,000 employee um, organization. So there, any, someone from Birmingham or I don't know, Cadillac, could have chaired that board. But because I'm on that board and I chair that board, that, that means something. That people see Muskegon associated with my name. And, and that's very important. Um, I've served on a number of national boards, state boards, and some, some other local boards that, that are important uh, for, for, for me personally so that uh, students or people in the community who can relate to these organizations can see 
someone, again, who either looks like them or mm -hmm. raised like them mm -hmm. on, on those boards. So, uh, so that, that, uh, that's, that's, you know, it's also, it's, it's important for people not from Muskegon to see that too, because I, one of the things that just really, uh, um, it didn't really concern me, but I just knew this to be the case, having lived in La La East Lansing and Lansing for a while, living in uh, Metro Detroit for about 15 years, Adrian in Metro Detroit, living um, you know, Massachusetts, California, you know, Colorado, places like that, is they needed to know that someone from, from Muskegon, Michigan, uh, could uh, move among them and could do the work that they could do. I mean, yeah. that, that's key for them because if that word's out there and they see us actually doing the work that we do, then I think that, that uh, represents uh, the, the area well. Great, great. Um, I want to kind of turn now. I, you've we've done. You've been here 13 years. That's a pretty long tenure for a president. Oh, um, and you know, um, you've done many things. Uh, maybe your top three or so things of what you're most proud of that you've accomplished. I'm sure it's not alone, but that sure. you kind of had a vision for and, and accomplished. Sure, I would say um, one. One thing that's not really obvious to everyone um, observing the college is I wanted the college to look outward to the community more than inward. And it seems as though when I came on board, we were more concerned with internal operations as opposed to how we can access resources from other communities and how we can share what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I say one of the ways that we've been successful is being able to access state and federal funds and, and, and grants specifically mm -hmm. that we almost never uh, were able to access before. And if we were able to do that, then that, that helps, um, I think that helps the college. And it helps West Michigan. I, mean, I always brag about the fact that the college, um, uh, during you know, my time at the college, we've, we uh, secure the largest Michigan Economic Development uh, Corporation grant in West Michigan history. It was $4.1 million. I say that specifically so people somewhere else in the region can hear that we did that. It right. wasn't someone from any other county in West Michigan. That was MCC. So, so someone at Medic, as it's called, thought we were important enough to, um, to support. They believed in our vision. Um, I, there's, there's a lot of um, talk about uh, the quality of the institution uh, uh, the, where we rank based upon uh, standard uh, metrics that we, we've done very well. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. Um, uh, that's something that we didn't attempt to even measure that before, uh, and now we're, we're observing what others think about us, and so they are sh sharing that. We're, we're doing well and been sustaining that, uh, I'll say excellence, um, as an institution in terms of what happens in the classroom. Which is which is important. So those are those are some examples of, okay. of things that we've we've done. I could I could go on if you give me some handy. <laughs> I, you know, you know, I'll go on forever. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. Those are some good things that we've done. And and, and infrastructure wise, we've really some of that was through those grants. But we've really uh, updated our facilities. Yeah. That was um, that was key. That yeah. was important. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't. I don't think um, a student can uh, um, feel good about themselves if they're walking into a building that uh, the equipment's 40 years old. I mean, that's, I mean that goes for, for faculty members, anyone, any part of our community. They need to be able to see themselves as being competitive with any college or university in the nation. And that's where I wanted our infrastructure to be. And it, the quality in the classroom, I won't say necessarily follows that because we had quality in the classroom before, but attracting students yeah. who, can, uh, t who can thrive in that environment, that, that's important as well. Right, right. And I think it just, you know, walking through the, the new gym or the new art and music areas just uh, brightens my day. Yeah, you <laughs> know, makes, the, the, even the science center. excited to learn. You know? I, mean, who, who's, I mean, who's nerdy enough to like walking through a science center? So this is my yeah, last uh, few days here. I, I, I walked through the science center a few days ago just to take it in. So, wow, yeah. that's, I mean, that was the first building that we, we completed. And uh, say life and physical sciences, uh, total innovation, uh, again, uh, if you're just the core of what we do, uh, life sciences, physical sciences, uh, arts, um, liberal arts generally, and sciences. I mean, if, we're, if we don't have that core in place, then students are, uh, their, their assumption is everyone else does. Everyone else doesn't, but we want it to be at the vanguard as opposed to behind. Right, right. 
Now, so you've, you've done a lot of good things. I mean, we all have uh, disappointments, regrets. Sure. Is that, what's one, you, maybe something you hoped to achieve and didn't, or something that didn't go as you'd hoped? Well, you, share? you know, what, the first thing that comes to mind is, is our Lakeshore Fitness Center. Now, that, I would say, it's, it's a double-edged sword um, in terms of how it affected the college. And we were a community college acquiring the center, I thought, was a very, very uh, sound um, decision for, for the community. I thought it was a reasonably sound decision for the college, given what our curriculum said we needed. But it was going to cost us um, to operate that facility. And that, that was uh, an area where I was disappointed in terms of the, the revenues that we were able to generate um, from that facility. So that impacted our ability to do some other things on campus. Mm -hmm. And we did, we did a lot, and we were able to do, do quite a bit. But had we not acquired that facility, we could have done some things more quickly on campus, and I think we could have had more successes uh, than we did. So, so as, a, as a disappointment, uh, you know, it's, again, double-edged sword. I'm actually chairing the search committee for the new um, executive director of the Boys and Girls Club right, right. that currently occupies that space. So, so we, so as as we attempted to maintain that facility and those kinds of operations, that's very good. But it was at a cost. So, sure. so that that's um, that that's one of the disappointments that I would identify. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I I do hope it it prospers in the Boys and Girls Club's hand. And sure. Now they got great plans for the building. But, yeah. Uh, Okay, and I, I never said anything about that, did I, Lon? No, you did no, and, and see, I, I, I'm, one of the things I'm that I, I appreciate here is that uh, often, I think there are people who don't understand the role of, of members of an academic community, which I think could be shared more broadly. You have to feel as though, as a, as a faculty member, as a faculty member, no, not as long as you were, Dr. Rappel, you've been going for at least 20 years, right? Yeah. You got me beat. But, um, you know, you have to be willing to, to, to put forth not just your opinion, but your informed opinion, which you do. And there are those who, who re either reject that or just believe that that's not your role. But in an academic environment, that's a critical role because we might be going down the, a totally uh, wrong direction. And, and without those in the community willing and able to stand up and say, nope, sorry, you know, this, is, this is our mission. This is our vision, this is our mission. Um, these are the values that we've established. I don't agree that this, this is what we need to be doing. And so that's why, um, whether anyone agrees with what any one person has to say or any group of people have to say, that's, that's for the betterment of the entire community. So, right. so that, that's, uh, that's an important part of what we do. Yeah, I, think, I, I do think the college is important in the community to uh, be a place for open dialogue on a whole host of issues. Sure. Uh, I know you've been outspoken on some issues um, in society and locally and, and nationally. Um, do you see that the coll a college, uh, especially a community college, as you mentioned, no. uh, as a leader in the community on issues such as social justice, uh, education, of course, but sure. um, is that a role for the community college? I think it is a role, and I think it's a role that sometimes, uh, not so much community colleges, but some universities and, and four-year institutions, I, I'll identify the leader since I'm a, currently, for the next three days, a college president, <laughs> But um, it's important for the leaders to, to put themselves forward because they're the ones who are most able to um, take uh, the heat when, when the heat comes. Uh, it, it's, it's important for us to step out and, and, and take a position that we think is a principal position that, that we've, I think in our, in our cases, we've researched the issue, we understand what the issue is. We won't say that we're absolutely correct in every case, but I think we're going to be pretty close to, to going in a direction that's going to be good for not just ourselves as an individual or individuals, but as, as a community more broadly. So I, I would like to see more college um, leaders do that. And I, frankly, I don't think there, there are enough of them that do that. They, they stand back and they wait for someone else to make the decision or to move forward. If they're not going to do that, <laughs> who's, right. who's going to do it? There's some that say, hey, I don't want to be controversial. But isn't, I mean, that's It's our job to be controversial. Yeah. It's, it's not my job to, um, you know, to, to not identify issues that I see that are important, that are going to impact um, you as a member of our community, 
our students, um, our our broader community, you know, our our families. That that's critical. If we're if we're quiet, um, then there's no one else uh, with with uh, with the capacity. I think the the organizational capacity, the structural capacity, to 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 put those words out there. And if if you don't want if you don't want to do that, you shouldn't be in the position. Right. So right. That, that that's my my assessment of, of what what we should be doing. Yeah, and I yeah. think as an institution of higher education, as you mentioned, we have the ability to do things that maybe others don't feel like they can because they're trying to make a profit or they're K twelve, which doesn't want, uh, yeah. has parents that are overriding their decisions and whatnot. And so we can do plays that people sure. wouldn't do otherwise. We have conversations on tough topics that people wouldn't do otherwise. And so uh, I'm sure. glad that uh, continued and accelerated while you're here. Oh yeah, and that won't stop after I leave either. So, so it's, it's, I hope so. it's, 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 it's <laughs> critical for me. Yeah. Um, community colleges uh, have changed during your 13 years, I'm sure. Um, sure. And, um, any thoughts on where you see community colleges going and where MCC will fit in those changes? Well, I, community colleges, in terms of where they will be in the next, say, I'll say 10 to 20 years, um, they're, they're, they'll take a more prominent role in, in the, um, in the uh, I guess, the, the pantheon of institutions of higher, higher learning. Before, we were sort of the, where you get started, and you know, um, you get do as, do as well as you can. That's how we were perceived. That's not how. That's not who we were. But there are many who viewed us as just a place to start. And because we serve, you know, I, I don't want to um, be too specific because I haven't uh, run the numbers recently. But over forty percent of all college students in this nation are community college students. So, so we serve. A, a, I'll say a plurality of. Of, of students, let's say more than four-year privates, more than uh, four-year publics. Um, so, so we we've we've been there in terms of the numbers, but I think community colleges are becoming more active in their in their communities and more active working with other state legislatures and 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 the federal government as well to seek funding to do the things that we need to do, or as importantly, to speak out when there's a need to speak out. And that's mm -hmm. something that we just haven't done. And that's, that's been happening more recently. Uh, you know, when I first came to MCC, uh, the, the sort of the, the conversation was around, uh, if you ask them, what does a community college do? Well, they do great work, they, they support our students and whatnot. Uh, and now, now people are able to articulate a little bit more clearly that we support students um, who were Looking to improve their skill set so that they can be successful at a university. And by the way, our students are more successful when they transfer to universities than the university's uh, native students are. Meaning, juniors at the university are going directly there. Community college students, when they transfer in, do do more well across the board in the state of Michigan. So, so that's something that um, you know, we need to speak to, and we need to share with parents and students that that is the case. If, if they knew that, they could not just save themselves lots of money, they could pre prepare themselves to be more successful when they are moving through their junior and senior years. So uh, Again, that's an area where you know, I'll, I'll keep um, on my, pounding my cudgel there yeah. on that issue as well. But you're going, uh, just quickly, you're going to be moving though from the community, is that right? We will be moving from the community. Uh, our, uh, the, the real short story is our daughter's been in uh, Metro D.C., Washington, D.C., for 17 years. She's been working on, on us for 17 years. She, she asked um, my wife and myself and our son, so how many times have you visited D.C.? <laughs> and enough. so we counted 17 since uh, she's been out there. Not 17, but 51 since she's been out there. That's three times a year. Okay. I've, I've been doing business in D.C. since like 1983. So I know that as well as almost any other community, including the places we've lived. So, so given given the kinds of things I'll be doing when I retire, which is mainly being a retired guy, you know that 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 will be my primary role. But I will be doing some um, uh, consulting and uh, the strategic planning uh, space and technology space. Oh, great! And that's um, uh, that's a better 
uh, place for us, uh, we, we believe. So we've lived in Muskegon, uh, the, the area for, man, something like 31 years of our, of our lives. So, so that's, uh, that's a good amount. Yeah. But um, at age 67, then we're looking to the next chapter and where should that be? And we are, we, we found, uh, uh, the, as they say, the DMV uh, district, uh, Maryland, Virginia uh, area is a, is a good spot for us. Great, great. I assume you'll be playing your trombone, so. Yeah, we'll find out. So there's, there's a community college uh, right up the road from where we we're gonna live, uh, 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 College of Southern uh, Maryland, and they have a uh, concert band, a jazz band, I think they have an orchestra, all those kinds of things. So they have old guys like me who, who want to keep be playing. So. Well, that's great. Yeah, I'll that's stick great. with that. Well, uh, thank you for 13 years at MCC and all you've done for the college and the community, and we'll miss you, uh, well, but good luck. No, thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll miss the community. I'll definitely miss the college. It's, it's been a wonderful experience. Well, great, great. Thanks again, and so, uh, thank you, everyone, for watching Timely Topics. It's good to have you all back, and until next time, have a great day.